Aaron, thank you so much for covering all that. You brought up a few things. I think out in the community, it is reassuring that if you are taking that pause, you're able to re-challenge for that low-grade toxicity and you're not losing significant benefit here. And that's important because we have limited treatment options here. Yeah. The other thing that you brought up when we're talking about ILD, scans every six weeks in uh, these settings. Blanca, out in your clinical practice, I understand that scans every six weeks during clinical trials. How frequently are you doing scans when someone is on data DXD? It just depends. If we're doing standard scans, it could be, you know, every 12 weeks, um, typically. Uh, but it just depends if the patient is on standard therapy and is doing well. We generally do scans every 8 to 12 weeks. If patient is clinically symptomatic, questionable, whether there's a concern for any ILD pneumonitis, we may increase the scans to be done a little frequently at every um um, eight weeks, six weeks, depending on patient is doing clinically. If the last scan, uh, there was a concern for ILD pneumonitis, uh, perhaps we'll scan the patient sooner. If patient did have ILD pneumonitis, we're doing cortical steroids. We'll image the patient a little sooner. We'll watch them very closely. We don't want them to go for a larger period of time without imaging. We do watch those patients very closely. We see them in, clo in clinic closely. We do um, um, see them um, with phone calls, virtual visits. Um, while they're on cortical steroids, we want to make sure that they are having a therapeutic response to the steroids, that their symptoms are not worsening. So we want to make sure that they are having a symptomatic response and that their respiratory symptoms are not getting worse. So having, as Erin mentioned, that we are watching them as a hawk. Um, so that they're not getting clinically worse. So we do monitor them pretty closely. So it just depends on the patient and their symptoms and their clinical picture. And again, before we run away to talking about the efficacy of data DXD uh, with CNS disease, Blanca, how frequently do we give data DXD what dose so that that patient in front of us is educated on what to expect? So the dose is given at six milligrams per kilo every three weeks. Um, and just uh, if that's the standard dose, if we need to dose reduce the patient, then we will dose reduce them to the first dose reduction to four milligrams per kilo and second dose reduction um, to uh, three milligrams per kilo. If they don't tolerate the second dose reduction, then we permanently discontinue infusion for the first infusion and subsequent infusions is 30 minutes. Um, and uh, we do want to observe the patients for uh, an hour post infusion for the first two cycles and then subsequent cycles we do um, monitor patients for 30 minutes if they do well. We do want to uh, pre-medicate our patients with antipyretics, um, antihistamines um, to, to prevent infusion reactions like um, uh, acetaminophen and diphenhydramine. Um, and then, of course, we also want to premedicate our patients for anti with antiemetics such as the 5-HE3 agonist. Um, it, it, it is on the NCCN guidelines as highly emetogenic, uh, so it does give us the liberty to prescribe um, the 5-HE3 agonist and K1 inhibitor, the dexamethasone, and then the olanzapine. So it gives us a little more liberty, and so it's just per institutional guidelines as to how patients are premedicated. Thanks for covering that frequency and the dosage with regards to that, Blanca. But that goes to show how different all ADCs are. What we have is another ADC, for trope 2, which is sasituzumab approved in breast cancer space. That is given on days 1 and 8, and we tend to experience neutropenia and diarrhea there, where with data DXD, it is administered every three weeks, as you stated.